Five Organs, Volume Five, Chapter Two, Sutra. Aniruddha arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, "When I first left home, I was fond of sleeping all the time. The thirst once scolded me and said I was no better than an animal. When I heard the Buddha's scolding, I wept and upbraided myself." For seven days I did not sleep, and I lost the sight in both my eyes. Commentary: Any Rudra means never poor, Wu Pin, and according to your wish, Ru Yi. He arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, "When I first left home, I was fond of sleeping all the time. The first Kaman scolded me and said I was no better than an animal." Shakyamuni Buddha spoke this way to him, "Hey, hey! How can you sleep like an oyster or a clam? Sleep, sleep for a thousand years, but you'll never hear the Buddha's name." When the Buddha said that to him, he became repentant. When I heard the Buddha's scolding, I wept and upbraided myself. How can you be so godless? I asked myself. Why do you like to sleep all day long? All right for you. I'm going to forbid you to sleep for seven days and nights. I did not sleep. He probably walked around and said alternately to keep himself from falling asleep, and I lost the sight in both my eyes. The eyes will work during the day, but they need to rest at night. If you don't let them rest and they get too tired. They just quit working. They go on strike, so Aniruddha couldn't see a thing. Sutra, the world honored one, taught me the Vara Samadhi of the delightful seeing, which illumines and is bright. Although I had no eyes, I could contemplate the ten directions with true and penetrating clarity, just as if I were looking at a piece of fruit in the palm of my hand. The first command certified me as having attained a hardship. Commentary: The world honored one took pity on me because I was blind, and taught me a certain method. It was called the Vara Samadhi of the Delightful Seeing, which illumines and is bright. I cultivated this Samadhi for a long time, and I obtained a heavenly eye which covered half my head. Dan To Tian Yan. Also, I had no eyes. Also, I didn't use the ordinary flash eyes to look at things. With this heavenly eye, I could contemplate all the places in the ten directions with the true and penetrating clarity, just as if I were looking at a piece of fruit in the palm of my hand. It was like seeing an amala fruit in my hand. The first command satisfied me. As having attained a hardship, Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been satisfied to see it, returning the seeing back to its source is a foremost method. Commentary: The Buddha asks all the bodhisattvas and disciples about the perfect penetration that they have obtained. As I have been satisfied to see it, returning the seeing back to its source. Is a foremost method, as I and Iruda have learned, you turn the thing around and bring it back to your own original nature to cultivate it. This is the best Dharma door. Shudra, Shudra Panthaka arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, "Commentary: Shudra means born on the way. The custom." In India, was that after a woman married and was about to give birth, she would return to her mother's home and have the child. In Shundra's case, his mother, who should have really gone back a month or two in advance, waited until the last minute to return. The distance between her home and her mother's was considerable, probably about one or two hundred miles, since he had waited until she was a full term. She only got halfway there when her labor started, and she gave birth right then and there by the side of the road. That's how Shundra got his name. His younger brother Shundra Panthaka got his name the same way. Panthaka means 
born in the same fashion. In Shun, Drapantha cascades, the mother again waited too long and gave birth and brought so he was a Kshundra's brother, Panthaka. Shundra Panthaka was extremely stupid. When one leaves the home life, the first thing one is given to learn is a short verse that is to be recited every morning. I recited one version, one version earlier. This is another version. Don't do evil with deeds of body, mouth, or mind. Don't bother any living being in the world with a proper thought. Regard the desire realm as empty and stay far away from non-beneficial practices. When Shundra Panthaka tried to learn this verse, he had the help of 500 arhats. But after a hundred days of study, he had to learn one line of it. Pretty stupid, huh? He'd remember this of body, mouth, and mind, but would forget don't do evil. Or he'd remember don't do evil, but would forget with this of body, mouth, and mind. I'm sure none of you are that stupid. When this brother, Shundra, saw that 500 Arhas had taught his brother, his brother for a hundred days and he still didn't know one line, he ordered him to return to lay life. Go find a wife and be done with it, he said and sent him on his way, refusing to allow him to stay and be a bishu. Shudra Pantaka thought, I want to be a monk like all these people. What meaning is there in my returning to a life? So he took a rope, went into the back gardens and prepared to hang himself. Just as he was ready to do it, the Buddha manifested as a tree spirit and asked him what are you up to i'm not going to go on living not go on living after you die what then i don't know don't die the tree spirit said don't take your own life there is a reason why you are stupid you should strive to change your forms of the past once you change everything will work out fine what are the causes and effects from the past that make me so stupid now Shundra Panthaka asked. Remember that the tree spirit was a transformation of Shakyamuni Buddha. When Shundra Panthaka asked that question, the Buddha appeared in his original Buddha body and said, In a past life, you were a Tripitaka master with 500 disciples. Every day they wanted to study with you, but they did not teach them. You didn't lecture the sutras or explain the Dharma, even if people requested it. They might kneel before you for three days and nights, and still you would not speak it for them, because you would not explain the Dharma. You became stupid to the point that you don't understand a single sentence of Dharma. Upon hearing that, Shundra Panthaka was greatly ashamed. How could I have been like that? That's what is called being stingy with the Dharma. You should all remember this. After I explain the Dharma for you, you should explain it wherever you go. Be sure not to harbor the attitude of, I'm not going to explain it for you. If you understand it, what will happen to me? Don't be jealous of others' understanding of the Buddha Dharma. The more jealous you become, the less you yourself will understand. Shundra Panthaka had been stingy with the Dharma, so he was stupid. But because he still had gurus too, he was born at the time of the Buddha, having told him of his past causes. The Buddha took up a broom and asked, Do you know what this is? It's a broom. Can you remember that? Yes. Then the Buddha instructed him, Then just recite this way every day. Just say, Broom, broom room all day long. Shundra Panthaka recited that for a few weeks. Then the Buddha stopped by to ask, How are you doing? Can you remember that? Yes, I remember it, replied Shundra Panthaka. Fine, said the Buddha. I just changed the words a little to sweep clean. Try reciting that now. So he recited, sweep clean, sweep clean, sweep clean. And he used that invisible room to sweep clean his own defilements. What he was doing was sweeping clean the defilements of his stinginess with the Dharma. Remember this, 
take the principles that I'm explaining to you in the Suraga Master Tra and explain them to others. If you do that, in future lives, you will have exceptional wisdom and intelligence. If you like to practice the giving of Dharma, you will never be stupid. Sutra, I am deficient in the ability to memorize and do not have much innate intelligence. When I first met the Buddha, I heard the drama and left the home life. But when I tried to remember one line of a verse by the first come one, I went through a hundred days remembering the first part and forgetting the last, or remembering the last and forgetting the first. Commentary Born on the way in the same fashion tells of his experience now. I am deficient in the ability to memorize and do not have much innate intelligence. Ananda never forgets anything that passes by his eyes. He is able to memorize things and he is endowed with intelligence. But I, Panthaka, am extremely stupid. When I first met the Buddha, I heard the drama and left the home life. Also, I left home when I tried to remember one line of a verse by the first come one. The one line of verse was, Don't do evil deeds with body, mouth, or mind. I went through a hundred days, remembering the first part and forgetting the last, or remembering the last and forgetting, forgetting the first. I would remember the first few words and forget the last ones. When I would remember the last words of the line, I forgot the first ones again. So in all that time, I never mastered even one line of verse. That's how stupid I am. Shudra Panthaka was stupid because in past lives, he refused to lecture the sutras and speak drama for people. Wherever you go then, you should make every effort to have others speak the sutras and propagate the drama in order to teach and transform living beings. Take this as your personal responsibility. Don't be stingy with the drama. I've already said this, but it bears repeating. Soon, Rapanthaka had to undergo the retribution of being stupid because he could not practice the giving of drama. He was stingy. My lecturing the sutra now is the giving of drama. And why do I lecture for you? Because if I understand the drama and I do not explain it for you in a future life, I may not even come up to Shundra Panthaka. He was unable to learn one sentence of verse in a hundred days. I might not be able to remember a single word in a whole year. That's why I don't charge money for lectures. I don't look for any kind of recompense in your, on your part. I just lecture the sutras and speak drama for you. I don't want to be stupid. If there are those of you who aren't afraid of being stupid, then just experiment. Go ahead and have the attitude. I understand the Buddha drama, but I'm not going to explain it to you. Try it out, and in the future, when you are more stupid than Shundra Panthaka, you know that what I say is true. You'll end up being the victim of the experiment. Ever since I first heard a drama master say that if you don't practice the giving of drama, you will end up stupid. I have never forgotten it. That reminds me of a public record. Once there was an official, probably the equivalent of a mayor, who was very interested in the wonderful drama lotus flower sutra. It was uh, strange, however, of the seven scrolls of the Dharma Flower Sutra, he was extremely familiar with the first three and a half. He memorized those as soon as he read them. But as to the last three and a half scrolls, he couldn't remember them for anything, no matter how many times he read them. He couldn't understand why it was this way, so he asked a high sangha of the time, the white-eyed good-knowing advisor who had opened all five eyes and had the six penetrations. When the mayor was announced, the elder monk welcomed him and the official explained his problem. Of all the Buddhist sutras, it is the Dharma flower which interests me. I like it best, but I can only memorize the first half of it. What's the reason? The elder monk said, 
oh, you want to know about that? Well, when I tell you, don't get upset or disbelieve. Fine, said the mayor. I believe what you tell me. So the elder monk explained, the reason you are a um, mayor is that you created some merit in your past lives. In the past, you were an ox and you have to plow the fields at a temple. Since you made offerings to the triple jewel in this way, you will master some merit. The reason you are only familiar with the first half of the Buddha of the Dharma Flower Sutra is as follows. It is the custom in temples to air the sutra text on the sixth day of the sixth lunar month. This keeps them from getting wormy. On that day, you approached the Dharma Flower Sutra and snipped the first volume of the sutra. But you only snipped the first volume, not the second. That's why you are so familiar with the first three and a half rows of the sutra in this life. The mayor bowed to the elder monk, and after that, he was even more diligent in his investigation of the Dharma Flower Sutra. An ox snipped the sutra and gained so much intelligence, whereas Srundra Panthaka refused to give the Buddha Dharma and became so stupid. If you compare these two incidents and reflect on them, it should be sufficient to keep you from experimenting. In fact, I hope you won't experiment, because to sink to the level of Shundra Panthaka would be a lot of suffering. On the other hand, you should not look down on Shundra Panthaka. Although he was down, he became enlightened after reciting broom and sweep clean for a short time. We may be smarter than Shundra Panthaka, but we haven't become enlightened as quickly as he did. So in this respect, we do not measure up to Shundra Panthaka. Sutra, the Buddha took pity on my stupidity and taught me to relax and regulate my breath. I contemplated my breath thoroughly to the subtle point in which a rising, dwelling change and extinction happened in Arishana. Commentary, the Buddha took pity on my stupidity the Buddha felt sorry for me because I was utterly stupid, and he taught me to recite the broom and sweep clean. He taught me to relax and regulate my breath. This practice involves holding the in breath for 10 cows and then extending the out breath for 10 cows. No matter how stupid one is, one can properly count to 10. On inhalation, and one inhalation is counted as one breath. I contemplated my breath thoroughly to the subtle point in which arising, dwelling, change, and extinction happen in Arishana. In the breath, the point at which you begin to exhale is called the arising, and the sequence progresses through one continuous breath. The Ten Taiskong divides this contemplation into six wonderful doors, six aspects of regulating the breath. We will not go into detail about them here, except to say that the beginning of the installation is called the arising, and continuing the breath is called dwelling. Change is when the breath is about to end, and extinction is when the breath is finished. This happens in every shana. In the space of one thought, there are 90 shanas. In every shana, there are 900 arisings and extinctions. These subtleties are not observable with the ordinary eyes. Sutra. My mind suddenly attained vast non obstruction until my outflows were extinguished and I accomplished a hardship. Beneath the Buddha's seat, I was sealed and certified as being beyond learning. Commentary. At that time, I contemplated my breath until I reached a state of there being no self, no others, no living beings, and no life then. I inhaled and exhaled effortlessly, and my mind united into one. I had no discriminating thought and no thoughts that sensed upon conditions. All thoughts stopped. My mind suddenly attained a vast non obstruction. Oh, I've returned to the origin and have gone back to the source. 
suddenly here refers to enlightenment. It was like a door to a room suddenly being flung open. All the air in the room was immediately purified. There was no stale air left. Have you noticed that although there are a lot of people in this lecture hall, the air remains pure? If you ask me why, I'd be hard put to tell you. Let's just say that in, in a body mind, there is an inexpressibly wonderful purity to the atmosphere. When you attend lectures on the sutras, it is necessary to be extremely respectful. This is because the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas will say, You are a rotten egg. How can you come to the white place and act like that? Everyone should be respectful and modest and have a harmonious regard to one another. Don't become self-satisfied or arrogant. Don't say things like, look at how dumb you are. I'm so much smarter than you. As soon as you have that thought, you start to become stupid yourself. Don't look down on others. The people in this drama assembly are all my past parents or our future Buddhas. If you slight these people, it's just like slighting the Buddha. So when you study the Buddha drama, you should regard everyone with impartiality. In the Bodhi Manda, you first you must follow the rules. When you are listening to the sutra, it is most important not to get up and wander around, and don't recline in your seat or lean over and prop yourself up. You should sit up correctly. Don't be lax and lazy in your attitude. Even if you are a lazy worm, you should not act like one. You should develop yourself into a polite person. Also, don't go sleep when you come to listen to the sutra. If you do that, then in the future you end up like Aniruddha. The text goes on. I attained vast non-obstruction. That means he became enlightened until my outflows were extinguished. After he became enlightened, he gradually attained the state of having no outflows and accomplished a hardship. He arrived at the fruition of fourth stage a hardship. Beneath the Buddha seat, I was sealed and certified as being beyond learning. I always accompanied the Buddha and listened to the to Dharma beneath his seat. The Buddha sealed and certified me and said that I too had attained the fourth fruition of a hardship. Such a stupid person also attained the fourth fruition of a hardship. Those who are so intelligent haven't even attained the first fruition. Are you ashamed or aren't you? Sutra The Buddha asks about perfect penetration, as I have been certified to it. Turning the breath back to emptiness is the foremost method. Commentary Bringing the inhalation and exhalation, and exhalation of the breath back into accordance with emptiness. Returning it to empty tranquility. This is the best Dharma door.